Hi, I'm Rob Gibbs, director of Mater's Tall Tales. I'm Kim Adams, producer. I'm Bob Polly, production designer. This is the 10th Cars tune, but the first Cars tune to be produced up at Pixar Canada. John Lasseter came to me with this idea, what can we do with Mater next? Well, let's take him to the sky. We worked in conjunction with the folks in Canada to make this. When they started up there, they had 15 crew, and 10 months later, when we finished, they were up to 60. The studio is under construction the entire time. <laughs> it's kind of a lot like the old Pixar. It's a very tight-knit, you know, organized the studio. There's so much great work that went into the buildings in Prop West Junction and the characters. They're trying to reference older airports with the different sort of hangars and the old towers and the kind of quaintness of it. But then also you got to figure out where do planes live, what do their houses look like. Clearly the driveways are wider, they've got wider garages, the streets are wider, but they still have picket fences. This was a chance for us to kind of explore how airplanes work as characters. So it's getting this kind of a less aggressive, kind of more flight team looking, uh, appealing jet. Skipper's an older Corsair, and one of the tricky things about this was first time we've seen an airplane, so we had to kind of figure out what is the rule set. You know, they're a little more chummy, they're a little squatter, where do the eyes live, that sort of mm -hmm. thing. And the mouth making that read. Exactly. We needed Skipper to have a little sidekick in order to suit up Mater, and of course, whenever we need a character to do anything in the Cars world, we usually throw a forklift in there because they're the only ones that logically can do anything. They have arms. It's, it's really, arms. these airplanes, it's really quite a helpless world. <laughs> and another thing that was fun was to incorporate actual airplane terminology. Yeah. It's like, okay, we got it's got to make some sort of sense. We got to, you know. Yeah, those, those instruction cards are real, right? They, are they based well, we on created them. They're kind of based they, on some, you know, <laughs> yaw pitch, all those things. And the airplanes have faces on them. So <laughs> that's, that's something Bob, I think, insisted on. Pull up, pull up. So what's fun about Mater in this state of being an airplane is he doesn't really fly awesomely until he starts going backwards. So having that telephone wire gag that propels him backwards. It's like, of course, Mater is the world's best backwards driver, so why wouldn't he be the best backwards flyer, right? He's a natural. He's 100% committed. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, 110. <laughs> You see a lot of these airplane forms in the environment in the background. And I, I know that was a little tricky for a while because it looked like these giant derelict planes resting among... <laughs> looked like dead you know, airplanes. It, it looked dead. They looked really dead. So it, yeah. was, it was kind of this integration of, of those forms into a landscape that made sense. Yeah, and coming up with a name for the Falcon Hawks, pretty much everything was taken that was awesome. You know, anything that every involved... Every bird. Every bird, <laughs> thunder, lightning, everything cool. <laughs> and so I think John just came in and said, just make it Falcon Hawks. It's two birds, of course. Makes perfect sense. <laughs> There's a gag I really wanted to get in there, but it's, I kind of waited too late to do it. Uh, when the falcon hawks fly over the corn and you see it blowing in the wind, I wanted all the corn to pop into popcorn. <laughs> Wasn't there a big deal about corn and how much corn and tall enough around the runway and all that? Yeah, well, we kept asking for more corn. We referenced a lot of DVDs and videos that had formation flying from all different right. flight teams. Just those inspired. angles of being under the wing and then the split screen. Mm -hmm. They do this a lot where they lock a camera onto one jet and then so you can see yeah. part of that jet and then what's going on around it with the other jets. So I love that stuff. My favorite shot. Yeah. At one point we were trying to get the short down to a shorter length basically. And so I had done this trim pass and I took out some of the gags, the bowling pin gag and the tic-tac-toe gag and just kept the, the Mater masterpiece that he painted. And uh, we showed that to John and he said, you took out everything that was fun about it. So we showed him the longer version. <laughs> with those gags in. He goes, yes, that's what, that's what you have to do. He broke the sound barrier. He's breaking the record. I'm breaking. Bill Cohn, Tony Kristoff, were, uh, we're all production designers on this one together. You could just watch this thing and just only watch the skies because it's really just beautiful. You know, the, the lighting that Bill set up in terms of the time of day. And you start earlier in the day, so it's this constant chase of pushing that the time of day later and later. So you get to the point where he's flying up there and, and he's in the sun and the earth is kind of falling into shadow so that you can set up for the fireworks later. Oh, we had Mater kind of land and then the fireworks go off and John's like, you know, have Mater push a button, you know, make him, <laughs> make him active there. So he pushes his button and then, yeah, of course, the, uh, the M. <laughs> it was great to watch that company grow from the very beginning and using Air Mater as the tool to get the studio in Canada going. To see it go from 15 people up to uh, 60 or 70 and to uh, really get to know people individually. And what's nice is it's not just a handoff. You're working together with them, so you still do feel like you're a team. It's a collaboration. Yes. Yes.